Holy shit. Be careful, man. I'm not Stop. kidding. Stop. You're scaring me. Back in 2004, Klaus Meyer, chef and co-founder of Copenhagen's Noma restaurant, together with top chefs from the Nordic region, came together to write the new Nordic Kitchen Manifesto, and a food revolution was born. The main focus of the new Nordic is fresh, seasonal, simple, and most importantly, local ingredients. This approach has encouraged chefs to explore new flavors, and Sweden's food scene has exploded in recent years. It's quickly becoming Europe's culinary star. Exciting new restaurants are opening across Stockholm, inspired by the new Nordic philosophy. At restaurant Ekstedt, Chef Niklas is employing traditional Nordic cooking techniques. So, Niklas. Yeah. Where are we? Well, you're at my place. Yeah. <laughs> this is my restaurant. Yeah. And this is like, kind of like, if I use a flagship restaurant. How many restaurants do you have now? Uh, three. But this is your little baby, right? This is my baby, yeah. But this one is a little different because this one focuses on the open fire and the old Scandinavian cooking techniques. So tell me about the, the basics of the new Nordic cuisine. The new Nordic cuisine is basically, if you would like explain it simply, it's like flipping the map upside down, the European map. I mean, originally every... What do you mean by that? Originally, the chefs in, in the Nordic countries uh, uh, used to look south for inspiration. You looked into the like, like French gastronomy, Italian gastronomy, Spanish gastronomy, and then you kind of mixed it up a little bit with the Nordic uh, ingredients, and then that was fine dining, high-end cuisine. Mm -hmm. But in the, like, in the mid-90s, in the end, end of 90s, there were a few chefs in the Nordic countries that got together and said, like, why don't we work 100% with the Nordic products? So they started sourcing ingredients and products only from the Nordic countries, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, so. In terms of like the new Nordic cuisine, we're, we're, like, we're more focused on the technical aspect of it than the product aspect. What do you want to do? What do you like, fish, meat? What's your favorite? Turbot That's what I want to do. Turbot and lobster. Yeah. Fish, fish and lobster. Fish and lobster, great. Yeah. You get you an apron. Oh, great. There we go, that felt better. Oh my god, we don't have a size for you. Oh, oh you, you so, didn't do the pork roll. You're so skinny, is this like the beginning of the show? <laughs> Isn't that really hot? No, it's not actually. Okay, you want to compete? Okay. Okay, one, two, three. I think you're over a hotter thing. Ah! Ah! <laughs> you won, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's that? I think he had about that much, right? Boom, in with you. This is basically how all our cooking starts. Just a cast iron pan, boom, into the fire, and then we just put in some lobster into the cast iron pan. I just like to move things around like this because it makes me feel like a pro. It's really, ow! See? Now you it. <laughs> Watch out. Let, let, yeah. Ivan, let you put that up. Hang it up on top of the fire. Yeah. No, the fish is all yours. Put it in, there? Yeah. yeah. When you fry shellfish, it's really, really quick. So you just sear it a little bit and then we hang it up here to give it a little flavor from the birch wood. The birch is like the the original way of cooking in the Nordic cuisine. I, I wanted the restaurant to be very old style, technically wise, but I wanted the plate to be contemporary. I wanted the, the plating and the food to compete with the best restaurants in the city. This is the, this is the flambadou. Seriously? Yeah. No joke? This is extremely hot. Well, it was extremely hot in there no, no, and it's no, no, extremely no, 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 hot no, no, here. No, no. This is really hot. Don't, I mean, I'm not kidding. Okay. Don't burn yourself. Safety first, yes. kids. Okay. <laughs> so what we're doing is like we're taking the, the, the tool out of the fire mm -hmm. and then we're adding fat into the, to the, to the glowing metal. All right, and sounds that, yummy. And that the, the fat will burn and then land on the hay and the hay will burn down and there's meat in the bottom of the hay. Was that a butter? Oh, that's cool. Is there any butter coming out of there? Whoa! <laughs> Blow it out. It's really warm here, Nicholas. Come on. This is totally medieval. Oh, I missed the plank. Blow it out. I got smoke in my eyes. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> I'll blow that one out. I was blowing at this thing. I might have burnt it just slightly there, huh, Nicholas? <laughs> I think it looks delicious. Oh, you cut it. You, no, you, you cut it. You do the honors. No, you cut it. Oh, that looks so nice. It's like Perfect. Swedish sashimi.
The flambadoo, it's my new thing. <laughs> I'm getting one for home. <laughs> so what's different about this restaurant compared to your other restaurants? On my other restaurants, I tried to make money. Oh. <laughs> there you go, it always comes down to that. It takes so much longer to run a restaurant like this. It's actually pretty stupid. It sounds stupid, yeah. Can you tell me something that's not stupid about the restaurant you own? The food tastes amazing. Yeah. So the next dish is the lobster that you cooked earlier. Mm, the one, the one I did. Yep. But I'm not one. getting the one I did. <laughs> it is, it is the one that you did. Oh really? Yeah. Mmm. There's your lobster with some brioche and turbot with some pickled mushrooms on top. And actually, my little thing that looks pretty good. Taste it. Come on, taste it. See if you like it. And it's subtle smokiness, isn't it? It's not that. No. It doesn't punch you. Because that's the most uh, that, that's the most important. Both thing from the both from the tail of the lobster and and with the bread. Do you have the bread in there as well, hanging? Yep. You fry it in the cast iron pan. Really sweet the the mushroom top. Huh? Yeah. You're the skinniest guy we've ever had in here. <laughs> sure that's not true. <laughs> well, you can keep on feeding me. I have no problem with that. But this movement isn't limited to Sweden's capital. It's growing across the country, so my next stop was Kuka in Gothenburg, which I'd heard was one of the best restaurants in Sweden. In Gothenburg and being on the west coast, seafood is a big thing, and it's a big thing here as well, right? We have like an expression that you dig where you stand. So um, here is the sea. the sea is just outside the door. So we can get fresh seafood alive every day. Like the quality is super good. Like people are talking about new Nordic cuisine. Like to make great food, you need to, to take what you have in your area. Yeah. But you, know, you cannot find everything here, but we try to, to take like 30 Swedish miles and work with that. So we got the uglar with the vegetables and you got the producer of lamb and cheese and uh, milk and everything here. It's all but, locally sourced. Yeah. I'm just waiting for my first course. So here's the first course on the menu. We got crab, the claw meat is underneath, and we got some thin sliced carrots and a pate made of crab, flavored with the horseradish, and then frozen. Another hard day at work. Mmm. This thing is this thing is awesome. I mean, horseradish usually just like takes over a whole thing. It's just there, like subtle. So nice. So mm. nice. It's like a crab, like a crab salad, but more refined. We think like if you come here to Gothenburg and eat, uh, it's not that interesting to eat the paella. Uh, yeah. It's much more <laughs> fun to eat something that we have here. Yeah. If you want the paella, you can go to Spain. They serve it perfect. But here it's better to serve something that's in our blood. We got Swedish squid, potatoes, a puree of leeks and parsley, and then whisked egg yolks with apple vinegar. No, oh, this is the best. I need to do this with a spoon. Just like a spoonful of gooey greatness. This is my favorite for sure. So eating in Kuka right now was bloody amazing, I'll tell you that. Just fantastic. Uh, it's a great example of the new Nordic cuisine as well. Oh, it is, oh, it is yeah. yeah. I've never eaten in such a place like it's this. So, did no. you eat there now? Yeah. I, I, ju there I just there. had dinner there right yeah. now. This is the best place in Gothenburg. Yeah, it is. I worked in restaurants for 10 years. Oh, really? This is, uh, yeah. That's this good. Is, we came to the right spot down. then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great hey, evening. Have a great evening. Oh, hugs. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Woo! Saved her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, there you got it. How can you get a better review than that? Kuka, the best place to get new Nordic cuisine and all of Gothenburg. Fine. But the new Nordic cuisine isn't limited to high-end restaurants. In Malmö, chefs Panilla and Jens are putting new Nordic food on the lunchtime menu. Panilla, uh, tell us about it and the food you have, you're serving here today. Yeah, today I'm serving uh, Nordic street food. You should always use your local produce in season and keep the food very simple uh, and let the produce speak for itself. Don't cook it too much or don't 
make it too complicated. If, if you use, for example, a parsnip when it's just pulled out of the earth in the right season, it's fantastic flavors. Uh, instead of, of taking something that they flew in from somewhere else that's been wrapped in plastic and uh, you know it's 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 such a common sense actually I think we've been looking abroad because we I think we've been pretty bored with our potatoes and our root vegetables and all that but then suddenly we got tired of that so then we started to, to realize that we have a fantastic kitchen uh, on our own here you can actually take the same quality of, of, of Nordic food that you have in the nice restaurants to people on the streets. It was lunchtime, so Panilla showed me how to cook a seasonal chanterelle mushroom wrap. So what you do, uh, you take handful like a handful, two handfuls, without any butter in the beginning. If they are really fresh, they have a lot of water in them, so you want to get the water out. Chanterelles are actually my favorite mushrooms. This is uh, Jämtlens tumbröd, so you put it on. Right now you can put in some butter with the mushroom. Ooh. Put it here. Okay. You put some uh, sour cream on. Is this Vesterbottenost? Yes, it's Vesterbottenost. Oh, this is. But you're gonna first you're gonna it's have great some. Great cheese, Vesterbottenost. First you're gonna have Swedish uh... cheese. Oh, first this. Sorry. <laughs> no, you have to listen. I'm not listening now. No, you say yes, chef. <laughs> yes, right? chef. First you take some of the sour cabbage, put it on there. And then you take your chanterelles. So now it's hot. Now you grate the cheese. Going. Yeah, now we get the cheese going. I'm so excited about this, actually. <laughs> and then you also put some of the onions on top here oh, yeah. in the middle. Now you're going to make that into a wrap. And now this is where you want the last bit of the chanterelles, right? And now you right? want the last bit. This is what I mean to pimp it before it goes out. You got to pimp it before it goes out. <laughs> it has to be beautiful for the eye, too. Yeah, right. yeah. Can I try it now? I'll keep holding yeah. it. Eat before it gets cold. Mm. <laughs> now you have like all things in your yeah, beer. Do. That's typical street food yeah. way of eating. <laughs> <laughs> the notion of new Nordic is constantly evolving and there's a new wave of chefs in Sweden who are standing solid on the principles of new Nordic but interpreting them in their own way. Like Andreas Dahlberg, head chef of restaurant Bastard in Malmö, who is embracing European influences to bring more variety into his new Nordic menu. I don't really like the new Nordic scene. There you go. It's kind of style of cooking. We're not really doing that. We're cooking. We have more influences from France, and uh, you know we keep mixing them up, mixing it up. But we use produce from here to do it. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Let the romantic dinner begin. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> here he comes. Here he comes. Ooh. So this is uh, cured mackerel, small tender poached leeks, just dressed in a mustard vinaigrette, some boiled egg and dill. This looks so good. We have uh, raw beef on knäckebröd, crisp bread in English. This is actually very new Nordic cuisine. It is, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. But, uh, I was thinking uh, that. But it's not stiff, so dig in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think the new Nordic cuisine is then? Stiff boring, doesn't taste very much, lack of seasoning. Fry a carrot and put it on a plate and oh, that's a dish. It's food put on a ceramic plate. When we opened up here five years ago, we were kind of the bastards in this town because we were doing something completely different. Five years ago, the Malmö scene wasn't what it is today. It's better today, it's not as good as I want it to be, but it's getting there. And uh, we just wanted to start up a restaurant that we would like to go to ourselves. How was the food scene back then when you started five years ago? We had all of these restaurants that was uh, kind of average and boring. And then we had a really fine dining restaurant. So there was kind of nothing in the middle. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where we came in. What's that? Kale? That's kale, cabbage, uh, roasted Brussels sprouts. And we have the tuna sauce, the tuna fish sauce. Again, it's getting better and better. I think maybe Malmö is like we're so close to Copenhagen, so I think that's a big brother. <laughs> so <laughs> they're the big big brother. Or, yeah. or is there there has to be a lot of exchange between yeah. between the countries down here. The yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all over there all the time, and we have a lot of Danish people coming here as well. Drink up. Okay, boss. Yes, chef. Right. 
There's no messing around with this guy. Drink up, eat now, do that, do this. It felt appropriate that I was ending my trip at a restaurant called Bastard, because it defines how, for a long time, Sweden's cuisine was perceived from outside, not sure of its identity and looked down on by the rest of Europe. I'm so full. Just kept on coming, dishes. Oh, man. But as I've traveled up and down my long and varied country, I've discovered a Swedish culinary identity that is redefining itself, but never forgetting where it has come from. From the indigenous Sami people to Spetkaka, I've found my country is protective of its traditions and proud of its quirks. I think we'll always love our pickled herring and our hearty food like meat and potatoes, as our history has always been important to our food here, even as far back as the Vikings. But we're ready for something new, and today's chefs are the Neo-Vikings, looking right where they are for the best ingredients and creatively using our culinary past to redefine its future. The new Nordic cuisine is continuing to evolve, and it's an exciting time to be eating in Sweden. But after all that food and traveling, I'm pretty full and exhausted right now, so there's only one thing for it. Hot tub time.